Today there's a couple of topics to talk about, so I decided to put them into a single video because they're all kind of shorter, but I wanted to make a video about them. DC's Omniverse, what is it, why they tried it in the past, and why it didn't work in the past, but maybe it can work this time. Then I want to talk about death metal and how it's all over the place, and how I think that's related to Omniverse. And then we're going to talk about the three Jokers sequel. Six Jokers. Double the Joker, double the fun. <laughs> right here today on the Comic Storian News Rant Show. Try to give it like a title or name so that people stop going. I thought it was a complete story. Anyway, guys, let's talk about DC's Omniverse and why I think it's affecting death metal and why I think it's affecting uh, Three Jokers and how that's going to tie into continuity. That is legit what we're going to talk about today. So if you don't know what's going on, Three Jokers just ended. Regardless of our overall opinions of it, my opinion being that it's a great Batman Red Hood storyline, a terrible Joker storyline, and many people enjoying just the the paneling and the storytelling style and stuff that are within Three Jokers, it, regardless of what you think of it, it is the highest selling comic book of 2020 for DC Comics. Now, in the defense of that, wasn't exactly a lot to compete with if there's only death metal. That, that's all that happened along with Joker War. Like, this is such a light year, makes it easy to be the top selling. But yes, top selling comic book of all time, well, of all 2020, which is a year we're all gonna forget. Remember that, guys? Remember 2020? No, I remember 2019 going into 2021. <laughs> Today's video is brought to you by G Fuel, guys. Make sure you use the code COMICS at checkout to get the insane amount of energy that I have and get yourself an order of G Fuel. Please consider helping us out by going to our sponsor. Let's get into the video. Anyway, in January, we're going to get DC Future State, which is going to go to the future and show us what a happy future of the DC Universe could look like. And we're going to get a bunch of younger heroes and the generation stuff, and all of that is going to be interesting and fun. March is going to bring the Omniverse. This is going to be DC's attempt to make everything continuity and nothing continuity at the exact same time. Now, they've tried this before with an event called DCU, which people like to forget happened. You see, New 52 came out in 2011. In about 2015 or so, DC decided that people seemed to be enjoying indie-style storylines, like Batgirl at Burnside and stuff like that. So they decided to create an entire line-wide change known as DCU. And the motto was story over continuity. Allow your creators to tell amazing stories about some of your favorite superheroes and that was what was going to happen. And continuity, schmontinuity, we'll worry about that later. Well, fans were not a fan of that. We had Superman without his t-shirt, well, in the t-shirt without his suit. It'd be, it was powerless Superman, and there was like five different storylines happening that didn't seem to relate or correlate with anything. We had Jim Gordon bunny-suited Batman going on, and that was cool, but once again, a couple of storylines that didn't seem to correlate with each other. On top of all of this, Justice League was doing its own thing. I may be vaguely remembering, but I believe that this was the period in which the Justice League was an entire team, and they were dealing with their own children from the future. Um, on top of all of that, we had things like Starfire in Miami, where she was just ditzy, like your favorite cartoon show. Stuff like that was going on. Fans didn't enjoy it, and it did so poorly that DC immediately got rid of it and rolled into DC Rebirth, and basically DCU disappeared without any fanfare at all. It was just gone. Um, that seems to be what they want to do now. They want to do Future State, they want to bring in a bunch of new superheroes, and they're probably going to make some comics related to those, but in March we're going to get the Omniverse, and the Omniverse's purpose is to bring things like Doomsday Clock, to bring things like Three Jokers, and put them into continuity, but it might not be the continuity you're expecting, it might be a multiversal continuity, meaning that this storyline is the Jeff Johns universe, where Doomsday Clock and Three Jokers and all of these things happen, but over here, this is the James Tynan universe, Universe, where Batman and Superman and stuff like that and the main continuity is happening. Oh, and if you enjoyed Injustice, well that's over here and that's going to continue to happen with their Year Zero stuff. And you do like Deceased, well that's over here. And it seems to be a way for DC to take what they're doing with the, with the movie universe where it's all about the multiverse and they're going to turn that into the comic universe as well and just do all the timelines that you enjoy. They're already kind of setting this up if you think about it. Injustice has an ongoing line right now that is digital. If you didn't know about it, it's called Year Zero, and it's setting some of the stage for what's going to happen in Injustice. Deceased has Deceased 1, 2, and No Hope, or, yeah, no Hope at World's End. So that's going on over there. 
three jokers has three jokers and it's so far out of normal continuity that it's pretty obvious that it doesn't fit it fits in with killing joke but why are red hood and barbara going to why are jason and barbara trying to make a relationship what happened to the mobius chair what's going on with alfred how is he alive it's obviously not happening right now and it doesn't seem to relate to the dark side war or to current continuity so the idea is that they're going to be making a sequel to three jokers that will directly link it up to killing joke now bear in mind all of this is basically rumors right now. They have come out and said the Omniverse is going to exist, but there was a leak early yesterday morning that there was going to be a Three Jokers single comic. And the this has led to tons more discussions and rumors on what it's going to be about. Will it be about Barbara and Jason? Will it be about Joe Chill? Will it be about like a fourth Joker? Will it actually be about six Jokers and the joke that Dan and I came up with is actually legit? We don't know. It could easily be about anything. What I'm hoping for is that it's going to do a lot more of who is this Joker and what is going on. Maybe even deep dive into his family. But the idea that there's going to be a sequel to Three Jokers is just weird. Because Three Jokers did sell well, which makes sense why it would get the sequel. But are they gonna hype it? Are they just gonna keep quiet about it? Is it gonna pop up in March? Are they gonna take four years to get the Three Jokers and then cram out a bonus issue for March? I, I don't know, no one knows. But it's all gonna tie into this omniverse. And I don't know how I feel about this. Like, it's cool. I like the idea of a white knight, of a three jokers, of a doomsday clock, of a, you know what, let's just even make it simpler. I like the idea of a white knight, injustice, deceased, main timeline, Jeff Johns, Bendis timelines. That's how we can do it, simple, okay? Everything that Bendis has done that everyone's like, doesn't make any sense, Bendis timeline. It's called the ultimate DC Bendis timeline. And then the Jeff Johns wanna be the ultimate Jeff Johns, Bendis timeline. <laughs> Bendis gets his name in two. I don't know why, but it's interesting. I like the idea, but the biggest problem that people had with DCU is how do we, as the reader, keep that straight? Right now, Three Jokers comes out, right? Everyone, if you go look at the comments on those videos that I did, you see nothing but people going, where does this fit into continuity? Where does this fit into continuity? In having it be separate in its own continuity with its own sequels and potentially building out its own universe, that's cool. But are they gonna make that clear? And honestly, I think DC finally needs to just break down and do what Marvel does. If you ever read a Marvel comic book, and I, I mean, it's this little indie company, they make small comic books. You may have heard of Spider-Man, he's the only famous one, but you know, they got Iron Man, Captain America, it's, it's a whole thing. You should check it out, you know? Marvel's, Marvel's up and coming. I think they'll one day be a huge comic book company. But if you ever read a Marvel comic book, at the front of it, it explains what happened last time. It gives you a little catch up. It's like, last time, Spider-Man fought against Mary Jane, went over to the Daily Bugle, fought against J. Joma Jameson, then he blew up the entire city of New York and Iron Man showed up and said, naughty, naughty, Peter. That would be a cool story. But that's basically what they do at the beginning. They tell you what happened last time so that you can catch up. As a guy who has to read comic books on a frequent basis, whenever I fall off of Marvel, let's say Iron Man's going on and I miss issues six through eight, I can read that recap and just get right back into it and know what's going on. Sure, you'll get more of a context if I actually read the previous issues, but you'll understand what's happening so you can read the current issue. Some of your favorite TV shows do recaps in the beginning. It allows you, if you missed an episode, not feel like you have to watch four episodes in a row. DC's never truly done this. Some writers do this. The beginning of many Batman issues, Tynion will have some character recap what happened. You know, if you read a Batman issue, normally the first two pages is somebody like swinging through Gotham being like, I can't believe Batman just murdered Alfred and sent Jim Gordon into Arkham Asylum. It's so incredible. By the way, I've got to go pick up a pizza to bring back to Barbara. I don't even know what character I'm trying to be right now. But, <laughs> like you always have somebody do that. But I feel like if DC's gonna go this route, if we're gonna go Omniverse, if we're gonna give three Jokers a true sequel, which potentially could build on more, which is gonna tie it into Doomsday Clock, which is gonna tie it into Killing Joke, maybe just a front page thing that literally says, Jeff Johns Universe, Doomsday Clock, Three Jokers, Blackest Night, whatever he wants to roll into his continuity. So that way you know what's happening. Think about it, this would allow writers and artists and everybody to use some of the same events and create this omniverse. What if the latest reader, what if Jeff Johns includes Blackest Night, Brightest Day into his continuity and the direction he wants to take with it? But in a Green Lantern book, they say this is the Grant Morrison universe, which also includes Blackest Night, Brightest Day, but here's where it splinters. 
You put like a roadmap at the beginning of your DC Comics, which will very clearly tell us where these things happen. Because right now, if you're a new reader and you go to the comic book store, you're going to see Batman, Batman Curse of the White Knight, and you're going to see Batman on the cover of Deceased with a zombie look. If you are a brand new reader, where does all this fit together? There is no clear indication of that outside of like some loose titling up there, which creates a problem for the reader to understand what is happening. That was the ultimate issue with DCU when they tried this similar idea back in the 2015-ish era. Basically, that idea was story over continuity, and they didn't state that there are separate continuities and separate multiverses. That's basically what they did. Since we as viewers and readers wanted to know what was going on and where these things fit in, that's what created the problem with DCU. When you have four or five Batman books on the shelf and they're all telling different stories, where do they all fit together? And yes, you can, and I am a, I, a proponent of the argument of I prefer a story over trying to cram it into a continuity. But most comic book readers aren't. And even I, at the end of the day, like to sit down and go, okay, how does Detective Comics, Tom King's run, and James Tynion's run all fit together? We all like that stuff. We all like the idea that Batman is so incredible that he did all of these things. Yes, at the end of the day, Tomasi's probably doing something where he didn't even talk to Tom King, and Tom King did something where he didn't even talk to James Tynion, and that's fine. But we all like to see how they would fit together. And I, I feel like DC's going, if they're going to move in this direction, if we're going to do Future State, go into Omniverse and do things like three Joker sequels, that is going to tie Doomsday Clock and Killing Joke and all of this together, we need to know where this fits. Even if it's something as dumb as a quick roadmap. Because if we don't have it, that issue is going to drop and everyone's going to go, okay, so three Jokers seemed like it was separate, but this one might actually link up. If you look at the way Batman looked at the back computer, on panel 9 of page 23, we see that there is an indication that the Joker War is happening, which means that this happened in the middle of that. And since he references the Mobius chair over here, like, that's what's going to happen, guys. And that makes for some fun comic book nerd banter, but at the end of the day, none of it's accurate, none of it's true, and it gets put on a wiki, and everyone likes to argue that this is the true facts, and none of it is true. Because the writers don't care, and they don't want to put it in continuity. We just, I think at this point, I'm just going to ramble and loop on the same exact topic, guys. But what I'm getting at is, Three Jokers, a sequel, sounds like it could be cool. It could be what we need. It could be Jeff Johns taking the criticisms that were put out towards Three Jokers. You know, we want more Joker. We want to know what happened with Barbara and Red Hood. We want to know what's going on with all these characters. And this could be his way to wrap all of that up and give us like a more definitive conclusion. But where is it going to fit in the continuity? Because the answer of it's Black Label, DC can put it in continuity or not, is not really a good answer. Because the fans are going to look for that link. So what do you think? What do you think the Three Joker sequel is going to be about? What do you think about the Omniverse and keeping continuity straight? Honestly, this, this was more of a discussion about the comic book industry as a whole, I guess. I didn't really know where I wanted to go with this. I saw the announcement for the Three Jokers sequel, and I was like, holy crap, a Three Jokers sequel. All right, cool. What does that actually mean? And since we got no information, I waited a day and made this video about it because it made me think about this Omniverse announcement and the Doomsday Clock links and all the articles trying to link everything together. And I was like, that, that's the problem with the industry. They're trying to link everything together and no one's keeping straight what's going on. Um, on top of all of this, this could all be just a weird cover-up because of the layoffs happening at DC Comics. Which, if you don't know what's going on, it doesn't mean the end of the world, but Warner Media is going through and laying off tons of people within their companies, all of them, that they own because of COVID problems. 2020 got us again, guys. We're losing tons of people on some of our favorite industries. Screw you, 2020. So we got completely to the end of this video. I did everything, even filmed the extra ad bumper, and Dan reminded me I didn't mention what I wanted to talk about with Death Metal. It's, it makes, it's gonna tie into everything I already said, so I don't have to say that much about Death Metal, but I just read that latest issue, the Lobo issue, and that was another thing that got me thinking about this Omniverse and Three Jokers and Doomsday Clock and everything situation. Death Metal feels like it's doing so well, because it is doing well, that they just said, slap death metal on it and tell a bunch of Elseworld storylines. It feels like it's setting up more stuff in the Omniverse. But the problem is, since you're slapping death metal on it, it's becoming a convoluted, kind of like, messy situation. Because now we have things like Lobo Batman fighting Lobo. This is awesome. This is epic. But now death metal is not a very linear storyline where you just go one, two, three, tie in, tie in, tie in, four, five, six. You have all of these extra things, which, once again, would help if you put things in the front that say, 
death metal timeline, Scott Snyder timeline, thing like where how this all fits together. Anyway, I just wanted to say what I was talking about death metal. The Lobo issue was incredible. I still love everything in death metal, but it's becoming very difficult to follow what is happening in death metal. At this point, you just open the book and go, Batman merged with a dinosaur and he's going to fight against Lobo Batman on top of a flaming Batmobile in a universe filled with Batman zombies. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> All right, now we're actually ending the video. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments down below about the Omniverse, about the Three Jokers, and about Death Metal. See you guys.